And what's up, YouTube? Norval Lanik here from AP Shield. Um, this video, I'm going to be showing you the importance of doing paint correction prior to applying paint protection film. Is it necessary? Is it not necessary? Uh, I got this client just dropped off a brand new GR Supra. Uh, it used to be a demo car at a dealership. So, uh, from my understanding, it used to be in the showroom. A lot of people were always touching the car. People walked by. A lot of the salespeople were always wiping down the car. It has a ton of swirl marks in the paint. Uh, again, very low mileage car. Uh, about 500 kilometers on the odometer, so I mean barely broken in. Um, now, looking at the paint though, there are swirls all over the place. Uh, so I'm going to show you, it is a beautiful red color, I'm going to show you on the A pillar, just because it's a piano black piece, it's going to be the easiest to demonstrate and show on camera the difference between, uh, you know, the polishing prior and after. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to polish a, about half of the A pillar, and then I'm going to apply paint protection film over top of the full A pillar. And we're going to try seeing the difference, or if we can see the difference between the paint underneath, if it's been polished or if it's not been polished. Um, paint protection film does act like a clear coat. It's 8.5 mil thick, so theoretically it will cover a lot of the swirl marks. I'll be honest with that. However, is it the proper way of doing things? I don't think so. I mean, it's kind of like you're putting a clear band-aid over, but then some argue that if you ever have to remove it, you still have to remove the glue and it's going to create, you know, swirl marks or agitation on the paint afterwards, which is true. However, I've got that belief that if we're going to do it, we're going to do it properly, we're going to do it once, and I know that the paint underneath is in the best condition possible and then we protect the car. Uh, I, I feel that that's the best way to make the paint shine through and we know that we've done a complete job for every car that we do. So let's get started. So for the A pillar, uh, I'm going to show you a couple of the tools that I'm going to be using to polish it. We're going to be using a Roops random mortable polisher. It's the LHR75E Hexlogic pad. It's the white pad. This is a finishing pad. We're going to be using the Sonax Perfect Finish. I've got the little pad cleaner just to make sure that there's no debris in the pad. We always wash the pads and clean them thoroughly after every use. And then we've got a good quality microfiber towel to remove the polish. Um, what we're going to be doing is I want to make sure that all of this is going to be knocked down. So I'm going to start off with one of the lighter approaches. We'll see how that works out. If anything, we'll step down the pad or maybe we'll have to use a cutting compound. But I always like using with the softest approach first and work our way down to the, you know, needed combination of pad and polish or compound. Uh, just so we don't use something too aggressive. There's no need to remove more clear coat than needed in uh, this in circumstance. So again, just to reiterate, uh, go over everything. Um, I'm gonna polish about half of it over here. Upwards, I'll have this perfectly polished out. This area is still gonna have swirls in it. I'll remove the tape and then we'll see the difference. Then I'm gonna apply paint protection film all across the panel and we'll see how it looks like. scratch it's still there very faintly but you have to see it under the proper lighting again this car does have quite significant scratching on it uh, take this for example big scratch in the uh, windshield client saw that already from the dealership so they're replacing the windshield for him already just to give you an idea of the showroom condition that this car was in now I removed this tape polish that out a little bit Tape totally, give me one second. There we go. And now we have a perfect separating mark between the polished side and the swirled side. Now I'm going to apply a piece of paint protection film over top of everything, and then we're going to see if we can see any difference underneath the film between these two panels. Great, so we applied the paint protection film over top. And now, again, we've got to keep in mind that everything above this line over here has been polished. Everything below this line has not been polished. Now, looking at the reflection, obviously there is a little bit of a haze. 
Uh, the film does have that. It needs some time to dry up. Uh, now, let's see if we can see underneath the film. And again, there is a very slight difference, actually. So you can tell, it's hard to get the angle right, but you can see that there is a little bit of a difference over here. You see that perfect line? That's where the tape was. There is a difference. This side, again, this camera, I'm doing the best. It's my phone camera on my actual S uh, DSLR. It's a little bit more difficult to capture. I found that my cell phone has a better camera for this for some reason, but it might be the lens. But again, as you can see, there is the difference. All right, guys, so now you guys can see that there actually is a slight difference between polished paint and un unpolished paint if it's underneath the film. Um, again, this is a piano black piece. After some time, maybe when it dries up, it should go down. Again, it's not as pronounced as it was before, but obviously underneath the film, there is a little bit of this like haze that it got. So again, I've always been under the idea that if we're gonna be doing something, do it properly. Now, theoretically, can you apply film over top of swirled up paint and get away with it? Yeah, 100% you can. Is it the proper way to do it? In my opinion, it's not. But again, everybody has their own way. I wanted to show you guys on video the difference between polished paint, unpolished paint underneath. If you guys have any questions, let me know. Uh, hit me in the comments below. Make sure to subscribe to the channel and I'll catch you guys later on on the other videos. Again, on this GR Super, I will be making a couple of videos of especially maybe bulk pieces of how to do the rear quarter panels, uh, most likely how to do the hood as well. So stay tuned. Thanks guys, take care.